Welcome back to the Everglory Devlog. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the problem of having units of different sizes, or more generally, you could say, having different padding abilities to pathfind together on the same map at the same time. What I mean by that is that I want the pathfinding system to account for the fact that this unit here should be able to fit in this narrow one by one corridor between the trees and um, go through this corridor if his most efficient path takes him through there. But a larger unit, like say this transport cart here, should not go through um, this one by one corridor as it's too large to fit through there. And if it were to take this path, then its hitbox would overlap with the nearby trees. Instead, the cart should take the next optimal path for its size, opting to go through this wider 3x3 three three corridor here. And I'm going to tease the solution real quick. And I'm going to spend the video going into more depth and breaking it down. Hold on. So let's hop right in and begin with the problem statement. So we have a 16 by 16 grid um, where every tile is either paddable or non paddable and we have some game entities which can occupy multiple tiles and we want to find the optimal path from the location of an entity to this green target and we want these paths to account for the unit sizes so we want the one by one unit to go through this narrow corridor and these larger units to have to go a slightly longer way through the 3x3 three three corridor in the basic case the one by one unit using classic old a you know grid based a star it will go from its tile to the location you know a star works nothing more to say there but if we um, try to just use grid based a star for the 2x2 two two unit then we run into a problem um, first thing I'm gonna say here is that you know in a star um, the the source of the path has to be on a single tile so for the unit we have to pick one of its tiles to to be the the start of the pad um, so we basically maybe take the center or the center of mass and you know bin it into one of the tiles and of course a star will find the optimal path and it itself you know the algorithm has no knowledge that um no knowledge of sizes right it simply finds paths on the grid so how can we constrain it such that um, if we give it the information that the unit searching for the path has a width of two it will um, be prevented from going through this narrow corridor and here's the the key idea we will have to modify our um, cost field we will have to modify the tiles that are you know blocked are non-traversable from the point of view of pathfinding and give a one tile buffer around every single blocked tile and if you think about it or look at it visually um, if no unit is able to step on on these buffer tiles that will essentially mean that you know every unit during pathfinding it has to keep some distance you know this buffer distance of one tile from every single obstacle and this buffer will end up blocking the narrow corridor and leaving only a one tile wide gap through the wide corridor and if we look at what the path looks like if we use this updated field with um, the buffer tiles blocked then the path is exactly what we want the unit will go right through the center of the corridor meaning it will not intersect any of the obstacles and get to its destination and I know what you guys are thinking or some of you at least 
Um, you guys are thinking about this case of, um, say I have a two by two unit. Well, it should be able to slide on up through this gap that's two tiles wide and go to its destination. But with the method I just outlined, no pun intended there, um, these both these tiles will be blocked and it will be forced to go around even though theoretically it could fit through here and I have thought quite a bit about you know this case and the crucial idea here is that you know a, a grid is uh, a simplified model of your game world and within this grid on which a star pathfinding is performed um, you know every entity is at one of these many you know at one of uh, a number of discrete locations so the position of an entity is not continuous right it gets binned to one of the tile location so from the point of view of the pathfinding algorithm um, you know the entity will not be it cannot be right at the boundary of um, of these different tiles it has to be at a tile you know the source tile so in this case if we center the 2x2 two two unit um, at the source tile which is you know implicitly what what the algorithm will do when you feed in you know a tile coordinate then we can think of it as you know the region occupied by the tiles as being a 3x3 three three region so if you want different pathfinding behavior for 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three units, you either have to change their sizes or change the resolution of the grid. And, and that just comes about from, from the fact that the grid is, you know, it's a simplified model which, which comes at a cost. Um, at a cost that it doesn't, you know, take into account you know the the fact that a unit could be right on the boundary between two tiles so if you were to do per pixel pathfinding um sure it would handle this case but you know good luck with with having your game run on anything less than a quantum computer and now just to keep developing this side this idea further to to generalize the algorithm for every kind of size of units um so for units that are greater than one tile wide, but less than or equal to three tiles wide, we did a one tile outline. And for units that are five tiles wide, we will just have to do, uh, you guessed it, a two tile wide outline. And if we look at the path that results from using this, this outline, the, this big fat unit will go right through the center of this five tile wide corridor, which is exactly what it should be doing. And if you look at the pattern, basically for, you know, one by one units, we use the original grid for units that are between one and three tiles wide. We use a one tile wide outline, basically the, the half, um, half the length of uh, the radius you could say um, for units that are five tiles wide, we use a, a two tile wide buffer. So for units that are between uh, five and seven tiles wide, we would use a three tile buffer and so on and so on and so on. So if you want, um, you know, to summarize the idea, if you want all different sizes of units to pathfind on one single map having a set of obstacles then every kind of size that I mentioned will need to have its own view of um, which tiles are blocked and which tiles are traversable and it will need to you know perform pathfinding using that view so to speak like every size of unit will have its own view of the navigation data and you know to anticipate once again what you guys are thinking, you guys are thinking, oh boy, do I need all these copies of my map data for every single kind of unit? Um, first, that's one way to go about it. 
and it actually wouldn't be so bad because you only really need you know one bit of information for every tile but as a final um, entry as a file as uh, to give you guys one more idea I'm gonna introduce a way to combine all all these different uh, fields into a single field or a single grid if you want and basically what you do is that for every single tile instead of storing just a boolean of whether it's traversable or non-traversable you store the largest width of a of the unit which can occupy or travel through that tile and if we look at this example here all the tiles that are touching the edges of the map or touching any kinds of obstacles um, they have a one on them because it makes it and it makes sense that only a one by one unit can be um, flush adjacent against either the edge of the map or an obstacle then taking one step away from the, the one tiles we have uh, the three tiles and it means that at a distance of you know one tile away from the edges or the obstacles we can have at most three by three units and so on and so on and if we look at once again this example of the five by five unit on this field um, when we you know pathfind to the green destination we will consider tiles traversable only if um, the value of the widest unit that can occupy them is five or greater so visually we can see that you know the set of tiles which have an allowable width of five or greater is is here which visually makes perfect sense it basically is all the tiles which have you know a buffer from the edges of the map or the obstacles and that's um, that's the idea in a nutshell I hope you guys have been able to soak it all up and in the next part I'm gonna demonstrate my own implementation in permafrost engine so here we are in the engine with this debug rendering on the red tiles are those which are blocked and the green tiles are those which are currently pathable and all the information you see now is for layer one which is for the small units such as this halop unit here and if I tell him to go here as expected he goes through this narrow one by one corridor here and as I talked about in the slideshow um, to get the layer 2 um, which is the large unit pathfinding information I take all the block tiles on layer 1 and draw a contour around them getting something that looks like this and if we give a pathfinding request to this transport cart here and tell it to go nearby the halop unit it will opt to go around and not attempt to go through this narrow corridor here knowing that it's too big for that and here I'm going to show off um, another detail of this system so if we look on layer one this passage between the cliff and the barracks is not blocked but on layer two um, with the outline it's blocked so if we look at the portal information which holds a pass between different chunks on layer one it's unblocked but on layer two it's blocked um, and what that means is that on layer one other uh, worker units can travel through this passage here but the transport carts know that they cannot fit through this two tile wide passage and they will pick another path going around and that's just a consequence of you know having um, you know two different sets of navigation data um, here I'm going to show uh, one more detail of this uh, um, pathfinding system for different sized units so these bear, rider bear riders here are the small units 
So they pathfind on layer one. These transport carts are the large units which pathfind on layer two. I can still move them around together, but they will actually um, use different paths even when they move together as a group. And a little you know, side effect consequence of that is that when they stop, they will usually kind of stop um, you know, separately like this. And that's just um, a consequence of the fact that you know, they consider um, each other as just being obstacles to one another. But the good news is that you know, it still looks sufficiently good. You know, they act gracefully enough that it doesn't really, you know, bother the player too much. Now I'm just going to hijack the very end of this video to give a progress update for all the real ones. Um, first things first, uh, the game now has sound effects. When the workers chop wood, you can hear them chopping wood. It, um, in my opinion, really adds to the atmosphere. Uh, furthermore... You know, when I click these buttons, there's little sound effects when you hit the buttons. I now have music in the game. Furthermore, I got some really sweet um, Slavic inspired music um, to be used as a soundtrack for the game. Really excited about that. Um, as you guys all noticed, I finally have unit icons on the minimap. I made the minimap uh, better to control. I let you to give unit orders via the minimap. I have this brand new selection UI as you guys can see and all the little things like um, you know deselecting units via the UI or selecting only a certain kind of unit that's all present in the game now like shift selecting finally that's in. Um, I know all the hardcore RTS fans like they don't care um, you know what I do with the game if they open up the game and they can't shift select stuff like they're gonna give me a thumbs down review on Steam and say I mean I opened this RTS game and I could not shift select shift select stuff right like that just what RTS fans are like like real talk but um, there's just been a whole lot of progress all across the board uh, I know I'm forgetting a couple of things but whatever you guys will get to see it eventually um, just been during laps in this marathon and I'm not done just yet. For all the guys that have, been, that have been following the devlog, that have been supporting me, that have been dropping likes, thanks a lot for that. And you guys will soon enough see the game, um, see the light of day. Peace out. <laughs> you ain't know what we mean by staying with the ribs. So since you ain't know what we mean, let me bring a better understanding. The world, the world's behind us. Once a motherfucker get an understanding on the game, and what the levels and the rules of the game is, then the world ain't no trick no more. The world's a game to be played. So now we looking at world from high, behind us. Niggas know what we gotta do. Just gotta put our mind to it and do it. It's all about the papers. Money rule the world. The bitches make the world go round. Real niggas do what they wanna do. Bitch niggas do what they do.